Being a VFX artist is no walk in the park. Dealing with software that crashes and the constant threat of AI stealing our job can be discouraging. But it's not all doom and gloom. The thrill of creating this jaw-dropping VFX shots and discovering new software to enhance your skill is truly exhilarating. Like for example, today we are diving into the world of Unreal Engine 5, which is taking the film industry by storm. In this video, we'll use the powerful combination of Unreal Engine and After Effects to craft a breathtaking set extension. You're breathtaking! Unreal Engine offers an incredible advantage by allowing you to bring any world you can imagine to life. From futuristic cyberpunk cities to desolate landscapes of the moon. Coincidentally, we have chosen to recreate a Luna set extension for our very own short film. We have combined a practical set using sand to mimic the moon's surface with a digital version of the moon built in Unreal Engine. Our goal was to achieve seamless interaction between the physical set and our actor, resulting in the most realistic end product. And before we proceed, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to our partner MSI for making this incredible short film possible. Let's take a moment to appreciate the magnificent MSI creator Z17 HX Studio. This laptop has been an absolute game changer, allowing us to instantly verify some VFX techniques and ensuring they are keyable. And oh yeah, let's not forget the vital part it played during our motion capture process. The sheer power of this laptop turns every task into a breeze, just like doing a real-time tracking inside Unreal Engine, which we did with the Vive Can Track system. I understand that not everybody has access to this tracking system, but fear not, After Effects has got us covered with its software tracking capabilities. To begin, we need a shot to track, so join me to the backyard. We'll capture a shot with subtle movement, keeping in mind that we are limited in the type of motion we can track. The After Effects tracker is incredibly powerful, but not capable of miracles. So stick to the basic movements like handheld, panning or tilting, because achieving a flawless tracking is crucial. That's why I've brought along the MSI Creator Z17 HX Studio, generously provided by our sponsor MSI. This powerhouse of a machine is equipped with the latest Intel 13th Gen i9 processor, boasting 8 P cores and 16 E cores. In simpler terms, the power cores are for demanding tasks and efficient cores are for background tasks. Now combine that with a whopping 64 gigs of DDR5 memory and your tracking will be completed in no time. It seems like the tracking went exceptionally well, as indicated by the low average error number. A low error means that we're on the right track and if you want to know more about 3D camera tracking inside After Effects, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. First, it has a 16 by 10 true pixel display with touchscreen option. This provides extra workspace in After Effects or any other software with its Quad HD Plus resolution covering 100% of DCI-P3 color space. It's a dream for color grading tasks and any form of VFX work. Now, while having a bigger screen, the Z17 is still super portable. Combine that with super fast Wi-Fi 6E, a powerful 90 watt hour battery and a special cooling system called Vapor Chamber Cooler and you've got the perfect laptop for creative professionals. Now check out the link below if you want to know more about the Z17. All right, let's dive into After Effects. I've completed the 3D camera tracking, now let's inform After Effects what the floor is. Identify a point where the target appears flush on the ground. Right click and select set ground plane. Next, right click again and create a solid and camera. If the tracking was successful, the solid would now stick to your scene. Once that is confirmed, let's create additional solids in the distance. Why are we doing this? Well, we want to normalize our scene, meaning we want to inform After Effects of the true size that we shot. Luckily, we have an incredible useful and free plugin from Workbench bench that does all the heavy lifting. All we need to do is name the ground plane ground, select all the solids and hit the normalize button. Voila, our tracking is complete. And now it's time to export data so we can utilize it in Unreal Engine. Head to the file menu on top, locate the export option and choose the Maxon Cinema 4D exporter. Hold on, we won't actually use Cinema 4D, but this is the only way Unreal can read the tracking data. Now let's fire up Unreal Engine. The first step is to enable some plugins that allow us to read the tracking data. Inside the plugin panel, search for Datasmith. This handy plugin enables the import of various file formats. Enable the ones specially for Cinema 4D and also the Cineware by Maxon plugin. Once those are enabled, import the tracking data using the Datasmith importer. A few prompts will appear. First, choose a location to save your tracking data. In the next prompt, you can leave the import options as they are and press import. 
For the last window, you can also leave it as it is and press OK. That's it, the tracking data is now inside Unreal Engine. You'll find a new folder called Animation, containing a level sequence that holds all the data from After Effects and the camera animation. However, at the moment things aren't really moving within Unreal Engine. We are missing a camera cut track. At the top, you'll find a track button. Click on it and select the camera cut track option. Once added, I'll parrot my camera to that track. Now it should be working, except for the fact that my screen is black. Turns out it's an exposure problem within the camera itself. I navigate to the camera settings in the details panel and disable the metering mode, resolving the black screen issue. Now all that is left is to add elements like buildings or vehicles to our scene. However, it's challenging to accurately position these objects without a clear reference. That's where the solids we created earlier come into play. They serve as a location reference, making it much easier to place the elements. Something else that makes it easy to work with Unreal Engine is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 inside the MSI Z17. This beast of a GPU is packed with 8 gigs of video memory, allowing us to do 3D work in real time without any delays, letting us create VFX much faster and more enjoyable. And we all know what happens when I work on a slow laptop. When I play back the camera animation, you can see that everything is moving perfectly as intended. Now it's crucial to match the lighting inside Unreal Engine with that of our actual footage. One option is to meticulously adjust the lighting using the sky sphere. However, there is a time-saving alternative, but you can also use the skylight and feed it an HDRI, which will save you a lot of time. This is a 360 degree image containing detailed information from the deepest shadows to the brightest highlights. By using an HDRI, we can easily replicate realistic lighting from a specific scene. Now it's time for rendering. We want our objects to have a transparent background, essentially a alpha layer. To achieve this we first need to disable everything but our assets, meaning all the solid layers. You can do this by disabling the visibility tabs for everything I want to hide while rendering. With that done, it's time to move on to the actual rendering phase. Open the movie render queue and adjust the settings. Remove the JPEG sequence and add a PNG sequence instead. Under under deferred rendering, enable the alpha option. Let's also enable some anti-aliasing. In the temporal sample count tab, set it to 12. Also enable the override for the anti-aliasing and choose the multi-sample option for the method. Finally, adjust the engine warm-up count to around 32. For the output, select the desired resolution. Since I am using the powerful MSI Z17, I can effortlessly render an 8K resolution. And just like that, my assets are ready for compositing in After Effects. First, I import my PNGs as a sequence, and then I simply place them in my timeline, scaling them to fit the scene. Next, the compositing phase. I won't delve deeply into the techniques here, as we have several videos dedicated to that topic. You'll find the link to the playlist in the description below. However, let's say I'm going to color batch the elements, add some depth of field, and of course I'm also adding a lens flare to bring it all together. Now all the previous techniques can also be applied to combine with a green screenshot of yourself with an entirely made up Unreal world. Simply motion track your green screenshot, add the motion tracking to your Unreal world and then composite everything together in After Effects. As I mentioned at the beginning, the possibilities are endless. And there you have it, a set extension using Unreal Engine and After Effects. If you are still struggling with the basics of After Effects, I highly recommend enrolling in my After Effects course for beginners. It's an incredible opportunity to level up your skills and explore the world of VFX and motion design. Just click on the link in the description to join me there. Thank you so much for watching, thank you MSI for the support and as always, stay creative.